Hello and welcome to Live at Mixtape. Tonight we have visual artist Teddy Focus with us. Teddy is a local artist born and raised in Oklahoma City and her love of painting began at the age of four when she proclaimed that she would one day paint on the streets of Paris as depicted in an episode of children's cartoon Madeline. While that dream has not yet been fulfilled, her love of arts has nevertheless grown over the years. Experimenting frequently with her artistic style, Teddy has an eclectic body of work. Teddy has became involved in the world of collaborative and immersive art and has been working as an artist with Oklahoma City's Factory Obscura for over two years. Working with dozens of local artists has become one of the most educational and fulfilling experiences she has yet to take on. She also maintains a growing personal art practice and focuses most heavily on painting and mixed media work. Teddy's virtual tip jar information is scrolling at the bottom of the screen. If you're able to tip any amount, please do so. And if you have any questions for Teddy, go ahead and drop those in the comments and we will ask them. Alrighty, and I'm gonna let Teddy take it away. Hello everybody. Uh, like Lindsay said, my name is Teddy Focus and I am an artist. I mostly focus on painting, but I like to switch it up every now and again. And I've been with Factory Obscura for a couple years now, and I just wanted to say thank you for having me. Um, now, before we get started, this looks kind of a mess. Uh, I'll just explain what my setup is. So if you can see it over here, I've got my little reusable palette, and I'm using uh, Liquitex uh, heavy body acrylic paints. Um, just got black and white because I thought we would just uh, work on the shading and stuff for this guy right here. What we've got going is um, I decided to paint the Greek god Zeus just because I felt like he was a pretty recognizable figure in case I run out of things to say. I can talk about this guy. But anyway, I am a geek. Uh, I love mythology and we're just going to get started. And in case anyone was wondering, I was a Percy Jackson kid growing up. Pretty sure those books are still pretty popular with the youths. Um, and I also, if you can see it over here, I have, uh, I made this model on a app called Magic Poser, and you can just kind of take human figures and like control all of the joints in case you can't find like a reference photo that you like or is what you were going for. You can just do it on that app over there. I just have a screenshot of my guy right now, just so I wouldn't click out of it accidentally or anything. But anyway, let's get going. I actually think first I'm going to put, just since this is dry, I'm going to take a little of my like mid-tone and start kind of putting it on the outside edges of where I am about to start blending, just so it blends a little easier. I don't know if you can see, but there's um, some pencil marks right here just so I can kind of see where I'm going. All right. Like I said, these are mostly Liquitex heavy body acrylic paints. Um, I've got some probably Liquitex brand, possibly golden brand, um, uh, matte medium in there just to kind of shear them out a little bit, just make them a little easier to work with. Here we go. And everything's going to be cleaned up at a later point. These lines, I'm going to be adding some more of these. I might adjust these colorful lines. And this is most, mostly here just to kind of remind me where that all is supposed to go. But we'll get there when we get there. Uh, 
Benjamin Harding says the color outline is really good. That is my best friend, Ben. Hey, pup. Thank you. Kelsey Carter, I like the lines. Very striking graphic quality. Thanks, Kelsey. You know, I this guy's gonna probably end up looking somewhat like a statue with the black and the gray, so I just wanted to liven it up a little and make it a little more fun. We'll see what we end up with. Oh, 100%. Um, they're just a lot of fun. They're really easy to read, like quick, easy reads. If you are just, you know, hanging out, nothing too intense. But yeah, they're fun books. Um, for people who don't know, oh. My goodness. I'm going to go grab that. <laughs> Awkward. For people who don't know, Zeus is the Greek god of, like, thunder. He's the king of Mount Olympus and all of the other Olympian gods. And um, he's kind of typically a jerk in a lot of his um, stories, but I still think he's pretty interesting just because of the like history and all of that of Greek myths, but he is pretty cool. Anyway, having a hard time thinking and painting. Um, I think I'm going to take Sometimes it's easier for me to use like a clean brush and just take some plain matte medium without any paint and then go like over my line to kind of blend all of it together. Just something that I've just, that I personally kind of just do. Um, I think, well, I'm a fan of mythology from like all over the world, but I think Greek mythology is kind of what started it for me just because I feel like those stories are the ones that you see most often in like movies and TV and stuff like that. But also my family is from Greece. So I kind of, I think felt when I was a kid, I was like connecting like the culture and stuff like that. I don't know why I said it like that because connecting with your culture is a cool thing, but um, I think that's what kind of drew me to it personally. Um, sorry if I'm kind of skipping around for everybody. I tend to do that and like slowly kind of bring everything together at once just because I've noticed if I, um, if I kind of obsess over one part, it just kind of takes time away from it and it ends up looking worse than if I just came back to it, if it's like frustrating me or whatever, so. I am gonna skip around probably all over this thing. That's pretty normal for me. Who are some of your influences? I, so like, I feel like the correct answer or like what I should say is like someone really famous or someone that you'd study in school, but I get a lot of my influences, honestly, from like other people that are currently like making art that I like follow on like Instagram or whatever. I just, I get a lot of inspiration from that. And then I just try to paint things that 
interest me. So Or sometimes it's just, I'll get into really practicing like one thing, like um, when I do commissions, I tend to get a lot of requests for like eyeballs, like eyes. And eyes used to be the thing that I like dreaded painting eyes. I'd like draw people with like their eyes closed all the time just because it was easier, just because I could never make them look alive. And so I just practiced them a whole bunch and then everybody kind of started asking me for those. So it just kind of depends on what I'm interested in at the moment and stuff like that. Kelsey asks, uh, where else can we see your art, either online or in real life? So my Instagram, I've got a couple. There's teddy.grams, that's T-E-D-D-I dot G-R-A-M-S. Um, and then there's also uh, Evil Woman Designs, which is my art page. I just mostly use the Teddy. Well, I use both of them. I use both of them. Um, and then I also have an Etsy. It's called Teddy Focus Creative for my Etsy shop where I have some pre-made stuff. But if anybody would like a commission, just DM me on Instagram is probably the best way to do that. I also like skipping around just because like if you do back away from stuff sometimes you can notice if you put things in the wrong spot and if you haven't spent too much time working on it it's not as uh, big of a deal just to go in and change it up if it's not quite where you want it rather than if you had spent hours and hours agonizing over it only to find out everything was laced incorrectly. Well, I guess there are no incorrect ways in art. I'm just a little antsy sometimes. Mm -hmm. Do you normally paint to music at your house? I normally paint to music or I will like turn on Netflix to something that I've like seen a million times so that if I miss something, I listen to a lot of podcasts too. I find music somehow more distracting than podcasts because I like want to sing along. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, what podcast do you listen to? Uh, and that's why we drink, which is um, the first half is always paranormal stories, and the second half is true crime. Uh, I just, it's pretty good. If you've ever, if you like those things, definitely listen to them because they're really great. We're going to take our midtone and just kind of like blend this edge. Romy Owens is asking, are you self-taught or have you had formal instruction? Um, I practice a lot on my own, but I did one of my, one of my degrees is in um, like fine art, studio art. And I did emphasize like in painting and stuff, um, but I have switched up what I do a lot. I think it's really just been through like quarantine where I've started to kind of figure out what my style actually is. But yeah, I've had some help along the way with some teachers, some pretty cool ones. I also, pro tip, have some slow dry medium 
in my paint just because anybody who's worked with acrylic knows that it dries really 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 fast and this just kind of helps also my reusable um, palette here has like you can soak this paper and keep your paint wet and there's also this little pad underneath that keeps it wet and that just kind of helps you don't waste all your paint Oh, uh, I went to Austin College in Sherman, Texas, and uh, yeah, that's where I went for college. Um, there was a pretty decent art program when I was going to like high school and stuff as well. I went to Cassidy here in Oklahoma City, and we had some pretty cool art teachers that I learned a lot from. I don't know if they'd be watching this, but Michelle, Miss Cedar, if you're there, thanks. <laughs> I still talk to my middle school art teacher like a couple times a year and she's kind of like a second mom essentially now. So she might be watching this, hey. All of my mid-tones that I've already mixed up kind of look the same in this light. I don't know how it's coming across on the screen now. Romy asks, what is one of your goals for your artistic practice? Um, I think if I could just, hmm, I always worried about how I would make this like my regular income. And so I think if I could make sure, like if I could have like a steady enough stream of like missions and people coming for like pre-made like ready-made stuff on like my Etsy or eventually I'll have like my own website again if I could do that I think that would be a pretty cool goal to have That's my aunt. Hey. I kind of went a little too far over with this. So luckily, because acrylic dries so very, very fast, you, it's a little more forgiving. So we're just going to come in there. Coming in again with some matte medium to kind of like blend things a little bit. And as you can see, sometimes I use my finger just because it's there. <laughs> Have you been 
Um, I'd say uh, a little more just because I've been in my house all the time and I think I used to make excuses like, oh, I'm too tired from this and this to like paint. And since COVID, I think I've really had nothing better to do than sit around and make sure that I do paint every day, which is kind of a bright side. Have to focus on the bright sides these days. Sweet. Kind of kind of what I was going for, I guess. I just couldn't decide what colors I wanted to make him, so I just decided to go for black and white. I don't know if you can even see this part on camera. I think one issue that I come up against a lot of the time when I'm trying to like work a little faster is I make everything a little too straight and like people's bodies do not have perfectly straight lines. So something to keep in mind for if you're painting, unless you like it like that. If you want people to look like robots, that could be really cool. There are no right answers. I would love to hear my love fortune with Meg. Love fortunes with love fortunes with love fortunes with Meg. <laughs> Good evening. I wanted to tell you about how I woke up in the middle of the night when I had a curious craving for an ink black sky. So I found my boat and I rowed myself out to the thick darkness and I could hear chimes coming from the ocean. And I grabbed a handful of stars and jumped in the water so they could be my light. And when I finally found you, you were tucked away behind a mossy green cave. You are wearing a red vintage Escada dress as you do. And you are painting bashful batting lashes and you would dip your brush like my cheeks in shades of blush and curiosity. And I wondered, she, she's probably a star, Hollywood and all. But she didn't want to be worshipped, no, she just wanted to create, she just wanted to paint with the hope that someday we could look into our own eyes and be mesmerized and hypnotized by our own way of being, by our own way of existing. So I wanted to thank you for an opportunity of such wonder that you have provided all of us. Thank you. Oh my gosh. She's so good at that. Thank you. I don't know what to say about that. She makes me blush every time. Yeah, you guys can't see. Uh, Teddy is very red right now. <laughs> <laughs> She's so good at that. Meg definitely has a talent for making people around her feel special.
That's funny that she said something about um, being a star. Uh, I have, as everyone has been, um, well, okay. I've been looking at a lot of TikTok recently, <laughs> just because that seems like what you do during quarantine. And uh, one of the things that keeps popping up is like these things that say, are you a star seed? Are you from a different planet? I'd like to think that I am, but you know. We can't always have what we want. Max says she loves your work. Thank you. I made this shape a little weird. I gotta switch to my tiny little brush for fingers. Cassandra says, You really do look great in the red dress. <gasps> Thanks. Speaking of TikTok, just for people so they know, I just created a TikTok. Well, yeah, I made a thing the other day and I thought, Oh, why not dress up? So. That is where the red dress comes from. I dressed up for my TikTok like any normal, you know, person in their backyard. <laughs> Why not? Just wasting away in my closet. to a larger one. Maybe not that large. What was your favorite part about working on this Honestly, um, I think other people, just because working in this group makes me like think of things in a way that I like normally wouldn't, like because it's so many brains all at once working on the same stuff. And so I definitely think it's like kind of expanded my like my mind and like how I think of things and so I think that's pretty cool
also everybody on the team is pretty cool, so that kind of helps. Kelsey asks, do you always paint with acrylic? Have you ever used watercolor or other kinds of paints? I've used like watercolor and like um, tempera and I've never really used um, oil or anything just because I didn't really use them in school and now I'm like, oh, when am I going to use them? And I've been meaning to get into that. I just haven't yet. But yeah, I mostly use acrylic, but sometimes I'll draw or use like ink. I use a lot of like India ink too sometimes, so that can be pretty cool here and there. Sarah asks, what kind of objects do you paint on besides canvas? Um, I mostly use canvas, but I do sometimes use like Bristol paper, which is just like a really thick paper. It's meant to like be able to hold on to like water and paint and all of that. Um, and I've also kind of started painting on like clothing and like textile items. Um, definitely though, if you're going to do that, add like a fabric medium so it doesn't like just crumple away the second you like wash it, if you plan on doing anything like that by yourself. Or maybe you like it like that, I don't know. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I've been painting on handbags just because I feel like... I mean, every day should feel a little special, even if you're just, you know, I, yeah, I put on real pants just to go to like Whole Foods the other day. I was like, this is my first time out of the house in three days. Like, let me, let me put on something other than sweatpants. So I uh, paint on the handbags too. And just so like, you know, it's fun and fancy. Pretty sure I keep mixing the same color over and over and over. I'm not sure. As you can see, sometimes I go a little dark on purpose just because I know I'm going to like blend it out with something lighter and I just kind of hope that it's the color that I wanted, but it usually is, so there's that. Just... 
question and asks, who is your favorite Greek god? And why is it Poseidon? <laughs> it's not Poseidon, and it's, he knows that. So uh, I think my favorite is either um, probably Hermes. He's like the messenger god, but he's also like the trickster god. Because who doesn't love a good practical joke? But, um, or probably like Athena. She is goddess of, well, she's goddess of like art. So there's that. Gotta love her. Did you ever get into the movie Hercules? No, and I never really saw that like 90s show either. I never got into Xena Warrior Princess either is weird you'd think but i like myths from all around the world um i just feel like here in the united states we mostly come across like greek and norse myths like you there are like clash of the titans movies or whatever and there's also like thor and whatever from the marvel which is you know not like exactly what Norse mythology is like, but it's kind of a way to introduce it to people and that's kind of cool. I'm also a nerd and like um, Arthurian legend, which is like King Arthur and his knights and the round table and all of that. When I was like a kid, I used to wish I could like, I had one of those magic treehouse books and they like went to Camelot. And I like really wanted to get in that treehouse. I'm like, please take me. <laughs> Oh, yes, I do have stickers, and thank you for ordering stickers. I appreciate you a lot. But yeah, I do have stickers available if anybody likes them. It's a little alien leaning out of a spaceship, like, saying hi to everybody. I've never really got I mean I love a good Bob Ross but I don't really sit and like watch him just because it makes me want to paint and I I can't follow along while he's doing his thing but he is pretty soothing I'll give him that Sometimes I have to wait until stuff's a little bit more dry to add like highlights and whatever, just so it doesn't all blend too, too much. So I'm going to go back and do the fingers a little. The fingers are not done. Like I said, I go back and forth a lot. So here we go.
think I'm gonna give him another hand. We'll sharpen that little line up eventually, but not right yet because we're not done with that little area yet. So. It depends on what it is. Um, like, since this is a portrait, it usually takes me longer. I just wasn't really sure what else to paint. Um, I mean, I feel like I typically paint faster than this. I'm a little nervous, but usually a day or two, depending. Like, if it was a size like this, I could typically in one day do it. I think I'm a little nervous knowing people are watching. I'm not used to this like Lindsay is. Um, the thing that I've myself had to do just on days when I like would rather just sit and watch like great British baking show instead of actually like working on things is like tell yourself you're going to draw something for five minutes because usually once you do five minutes you're going to want to do more but if you don't want to do more then you've still taken five minutes out of your day to draw something so I think that's the best thing is to just do it. Well, thank you for tuning in to Live at Mixtape, and a huge thanks to Teddy for live painting for us tonight, and a huge thanks to Meg for her beautiful love fortune. Be sure to tune in next Friday to catch a performance by Chelsea Days. And although we have pressed pause on offering small group reservations at Mixtape, you can still enjoy our Mixtape 360 virtual tour, available 24-7 at factoryobscura.com. And our gift shop is also still available online for pickup or shipping. And be sure to enter the Pillow Fort Parade for a chance to win a Family of Five annual pass. Details can be found on our Facebook and Instagram account. And as always, please wear a mask, wash your hands, and keep a safe distance. We'll see you next week.